It's amazing what futurists predict that doesn't come true and what they fail to predict that does come true. I wrote a comprehensive review on a book by Wired that they published over 25 years ago and I did a, did a kind of a deep dive into it and I analyzed all of their predictions one by one and gave them a scorecard on exactly how right they were and how wrong they were and then I thought it would be fun to submit the text of my article to Google's Notebook LM. Now this is where uh, an AI or two AIs seemingly will discuss whatever you whatever text you upload to it. So I took the text of my article and I, I uploaded it to Google LM and if, if you haven't heard this before you'll be amazed. You'll have a hard time believing that this is actually both of these people these podcasters are actually AIs speaking. Not only are AIs doing the discussing, but AI also uh, read the article that I uploaded and um, wrote the summary of it, wrote the uh, complete script of the podcast, and decided what aspects of the article to, um, to talk about and what not to talk about. And basically, it, it did the job of editor and writer and podcaster and everything. The only thing I did in the following was add the images. So um, with that in mind, keep that in mind when you, when you watch this. And by the way, at the end of this video, I will give a link so that you can try out Google Notebook LM yourself. Welcome to the deep dive. <laughs> Today, uh, we're going to do some time traveling. Back to 1996, Ooh. the year of dial-up modems, oh, yeah, yeah. Space Girls, nice, and a really interesting book okay. published by Wired Magazine called Reality Check. Mm. This book, it was full of predictions about the future of technology, yeah. and you've shared a review article with me that looks back on how accurate those predictions were, uh -huh. so we'll be exploring just how well their crystal ball worked out over the last 25 years. What's really cool about this book is... yeah. It didn't just focus on the gadgets and gizmos like you might think. Right. It looked at technology on like a bigger scale. Yeah. You know, like how it might impact our lives, you know, right. our work, our relationships, even our health. Yeah. The article that we'll be deep diving into, yeah. it takes us year by year through Wired's predictions. I love that. Which is a really fascinating way to look back, not just at the tech advancements, but also how our expectations of the future have changed over time. Exactly. Yeah. And what I find particularly interesting is that it's not just about whether a prediction was right or wrong, but the why. Like, what caused some of these predictions to become reality while others completely missed the mark? Right. Like, were there any blind spots or biases <laughs> that yeah. influenced Wire's predictions? For sure. Maybe by examining these hits and misses, we can get better at anticipating the future ourselves. Absolutely. It gives us a framework for thinking about how technology evolves yeah, and the forces that drive those changes. So to get started, let's look at some of the areas where Wired really hit the nail on the head. Okay. I mean, they had some pretty impressive predictions that actually came true. They did. For example, remember floppy disks? Oh, yeah. Wired predicted that CD burners would make them obsolete. And they were totally right. It's amazing how quickly CD burners took over. Yeah. But this shift wasn't just about convenience, right? It right. completely changed how much data we could store and share. Exactly. It paved the way for so many things we take for granted today. Yeah. Like digital music. Right. Huge software downloads. Yeah. It's like CD burners were a stepping stone to the massive amount of data we handle now. It's wild to think how much things have changed just in terms of data storage. I know. But they also predicted movies on demand, mm -hmm. which is spot on considering how we consume entertainment today. Hmm. You know? Well, their timeline was a little off. Okay. They predicted it for 1997. Oh, wow. But services like Netflix didn't really take off until around 2007. Yeah, but still, yeah. the core idea was there. Yeah. Moving away from physical media to yeah. instantly accessing any movie we want. Okay, and yeah. now it's not just movies. It's everything. TV shows, music, even books. Right. It's all on demand. It's a complete transformation in how we experience entertainment. Yeah. And Wired saw that coming back in 96. Okay, this next one might be a little bittersweet. Right. But Wired also predicted the International Space Station. Okay. Which, as we all know, is up there and operational. Right. So another point for Wired. But you're right. It is bittersweet. 
The space shuttle program, which was supposed to be, you know, a key part of the space station, didn't survive to see it fully realized. It's a reminder that technological progress isn't always a smooth upward trajectory. Sometimes there are setbacks, shifts in priorities, Uh or unexpected obstacles along the way. Definitely. It's not always a straight line from idea to reality. Now, this one really blew my mind. Okay. In 1998, they predicted eCash. Whoa. They didn't call it Bitcoin, obviously. Right. right. But they nailed the fundamental concepts of cryptocurrency. It's fascinating how they saw not just the technology itself, yeah. but some of the potential implications for society. Yeah. They talked about the benefits. Like what? Like transparency and efficiency. Okay. But also raised concerns about things like government tracking of spending. It's interesting that even back then, those concerns about privacy and control in a digital world For sure. were already on people's minds. Yeah. And speaking of things that are way bigger now than they were back then, oh yeah. Wired also predicted the rise of a massive online retailer that would be as big as Sears. Hmm. They couldn't have known it would be Amazon specifically. Right. But they understood how online shopping yeah. had the potential to completely changed the retail landscape. And it's not just about shopping, right? It's huge. It's raised a whole bunch of new questions about monopolies, Mm -hmm. how consumer data is used, Mm -hmm. and the impact on traditional brick and mortar businesses. Exactly. It's a perfect example of how technological innovations can have ripple effects across the entire economy and society. It really makes you wonder what those ripple effects will look like 25 years from now. Yeah. But let's stick with the present for now. Okay. Another accurate prediction was that aquaculture would become the primary source of seafood in the U.S. Oh, wow. Um, They even got the timeline right. eh, Did they? Aquaculture hit that mark in 2014. Oh, wow. But the article we're looking at, it also brings up important questions about the quality and sustainability of farmed fish. It's a good reminder that even when a prediction comes true, it doesn't mean there aren't still important issues to consider. Absolutely. Uh, Technological advancements often come with trade-offs. Yeah. And it's crucial to be aware of those. Okay, one last big win before we move on to some of Wired's misses. Right. They predicted that a computer would beat a human chess master. And they were right. Deep Blue's victory over Kasparov. Oh, my gosh. I remember that. Just a year after Reality Check was published. It was a landmark moment in the development of artificial intelligence. Yes. I remember that. It felt like a huge deal at the time. It was. And it's interesting that chess is still such a popular game, even though computers have basically mastered it. I think it speaks to the enduring appeal of the game itself. Yeah. Even if a computer can calculate the best moves, there's still a certain beauty and creativity to human chess play. Yeah. That's hard to replicate. And speaking of things that have evolved dramatically, okay. remember, dial-up internet. <sighs> oh. Wired predicted we'd move beyond that to a world of high bandwidth internet. Amazing. Even mentioning fiber optics. They called it fiber to the home. Uh-huh. And it's become essential to our digital lives. Absolutely. Think about how much we rely on fast, reliable internet for work, entertainment, staying connected. It's true. It's all thanks to those fiber optic cables. It's hard to imagine going back to those dial-up days. I know. And before we move on to Wired's less accurate predictions, there's one more hit that's particularly relevant considering what's happened in the past few years. Are you talking about their prediction about telecommuting? Exactly. Reality Check predicted a large portion of the workforce would be working remotely. Right. And even mentioned potential downsides like isolation. It might have taken a global pandemic to accelerate the trend, but they were definitely onto something. It's a great example of how sometimes the technological potential for something can exist long before social or economic factors. Right. Make it a widespread reality. Yeah. The seeds for these big changes are often planted years in advance. It makes you wonder what other seeds have been planted that we just haven't seen fully bloom yet. I know, right. But for now, let's take a look at what Wired got wrong. Okay. Get ready for some predictions that were way off the mark. Oh, boy. And maybe even a few that are just plain strange. This is where things get really interesting. Sometimes the most inaccurate predictions tell us the most about the assumptions and biases of the time. Oh, yeah. So... Buckle up for some head-scratching moments, some did-they-really-say-that <laughs> reactions, Love it. and some valuable insights into how our understanding of the future is constantly evolving. All right, so let's shift gears a little bit and 
look at some of Wired's predictions that didn't quite pan out. You know, it's fascinating to see where their vision of the future diverged from what actually happened. I'm ready for some surprises. Okay. Let's start with this one. Genetically engineered weapons of war. Ooh. Wired predicted these would be a reality by 1996. It's a grim topic for sure. Yeah. And while they may not have envisioned it exactly like this, the debate surrounding the origins of COVID-19 and the possibility of a lab leak brings this prediction uncomfortably close to reality. Yeah, it definitely makes you think about the potential for a technology to be used in harmful ways. For sure. Now, this next one is a little less intense, but still interesting. Okay. Wired predicted a male birth control pill would be available by 1999. And yet, here we are in 2024, still waiting. I know. I guess some scientific advancements are just more challenging than we anticipate. You'd think with all the progress we've made in medicine, we would have figured that one out by now. Right. It really shows the complexity of the human body and how medical research can take a lot longer than expected. There are so many factors involved. Yeah. Not just the science itself. Right. But also funding ethical considerations, and the unpredictable nature of clinical trials. Speaking of things that haven't quite materialized, yeah. remember their prediction about solar-powered automobiles? Oh, yeah. Wired thought we'd all be cruising around in sun-powered cars by 2001. <laughs> I think they were a bit too optimistic about the efficiency of solar panels. Yeah. At least when it comes to powering something as energy-intensive as a car. Right. Solar energy is great, but it's not like you can just slap a few panels on a car and expect it to run forever. Yeah, and imagine That's... trying to find a parking spot in the shade all the time. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's so true. Okay, here's another one that falls into the wishful thinking category. Okay. A fat-destroying pill. Oh, right. Wired seemed pretty confident we'd have this miracle cure by 2002. It seems like the quest for a quick fix yeah. when it comes to weight loss okay. is a recurring theme throughout history. Right. The reality is that it's a complex issue sure. that involves genetics, lifestyle choices, and individual metabolism. It's so tempting to believe there's a magic solution. I know. But ultimately, there's no substitute for a healthy lifestyle. Absolutely. Which reminds me of another prediction that hasn't quite lived up to the hype, the house cleaning robot. Oh, yeah. They envisioned a fully automated house cleaner by 2005. We do have robotic vacuums. That's true. But they're a far cry from a robot that can fold laundry, do the dishes, and tidy up a cluttered room. Right. Those tasks are much more complicated for a machine to handle than they might seem. I'm actually okay with letting the robots handle the vacuuming, but I draw the line at them folding my laundry. I hear you. Okay, this next one is a big miss. Okay. Humans on Mars by 2020. Yeah, that one definitely didn't happen. No. The challenges of interplanetary travel are immense. Right. From radiation shielding to life support systems. Yeah. It's a lot more complicated than just launching a rocket. And it seems like public interest in space exploration has waned a bit since the excitement of the Apollo missions. It has. It's incredibly expensive and risky. Uh-huh. And the payoff isn't always clear to everyone. Right. Which brings us to a prediction that's both intriguing and a bit unnerving. Okay. Self-replicating robots. Oh. Wired thought we'd have these microscopic machines by 2006. With the tiny robots that can build copies of themselves. Yes. That sounds like something straight out of a science fiction movie. Not, not necessarily a happy one. Right. It's a great example of how nanotechnology has both incredible potential and significant risks. Yeah. Imagine tiny robots repairing damaged cells or cleaning up environmental pollution. Okay. That's the positive side. Right. But there's also the fear of what could happen if they got out of control. Oh no. So-called gray goo scenario. Yeah. Where they consume all matter on earth. Okay, that's enough of that thought experiment for me. I agree. Let's move on to something a little less apocalyptic. Wired also predicted we'd have a sober up drug by 2020. Hmm. Like a magic pill to instantly undo the effects of alcohol. Exactly. It seems they might have underestimated the importance of personal responsibility mm -hmm. and overestimated our ability to circumvent the consequences of our actions. It's like they thought technology could solve any problem, yeah. even ones that might be better addressed through behavior change. Right. And speaking of choices, uh, we're going to tread lightly here. Okay. But Wired had some, shall we say, interesting ideas about the future of intimacy. Right. They predicted things like teledildonics and virtual sex slaves. These predictions definitely raise some ethical questions. Mm -hmm. It's not just about the technology itself, yeah. but how it could be used mm -hmm. and the potential impact on human relationships and our understanding of consent. 
It's a complex topic that deserves a deep dive of its own. Agreed. Okay, let's lighten things up with a prediction that's a bit more wholesome, right. even if it was inaccurate. Wired thought we'd all be zipping around in personal jetpacks by 2014. They focused on the challenges of energy costs. Right. But I think they overlooked a more basic concern. Safety. Oh, yeah. Imagine everyone flying around in jetpacks. Oh, my God. It'd be absolute chaos. Right. Traffic jams would take on a whole new dimension. I can't even imagine. Okay, last one in the misses category, and it's a big one. The decriminalization of all drugs in the U.S. Wow. Wired predicted this would happen by 2019. While we have seen progress with marijuana legalization, right. their prediction was much broader, yeah. encompassing all drugs and tying it to the expansion of civil liberties. Mm. It's an interesting perspective, but one that hasn't quite played out as they envisioned. Okay, so we've covered the hits, we've explored the misses, but now it's time for the really mind-blowing part. Okay. The things Wired completely missed. Well, These I mean, aren't just minor oversights. We're talking about huge technological and social shifts right. that weren't even on their radar back in 96. This is where we see the limitations of even the most educated guesses about the future. Yeah. Sometimes the biggest disruptions come from places we least expect. And the ways technology impacts our lives can be truly unpredictable. All right, drumroll, please. The biggest miss of all. The smartphone. Oh, wow. I mean, come on. It's not just a phone. It's a camera, a computer, a gaming device, <laughs> a social connector. Yeah. It's practically an extension of our brains at this point. It's a perfect example of how technology often evolves in ways we can't foresee. Right. Wired was focused on individual devices. Yeah. Picture phones, VR headsets. Mm -hmm. But they didn't anticipate how these technologies would converge into one ubiquitous device that would fundamentally change how we live, work, and interact with the world. And speaking of things that have fundamentally changed how we interact, yes. Wired completely missed the rise of social media. It really did. No Facebook, no Twitter, no Instagram in their predictions. It's incredible to think about the impact social media has had on communication, politics, and culture. It really is. It's connected us globally. Yeah but also created echo chambers and fueled polarization. Right. It's given a voice to the voiceless, uh -huh. but also opened the door to misinformation and manipulation. It's a double-edged sword, that's for sure. Absolutely. And speaking of things with massive implications, another big miss was the rise of AI. Right. We're talking everything from personalized recommendations to self-driving cars, and the ethical and societal implications are still unfolding. AI has the potential to revolutionize countless industries, Yeah, but it also raises concerns about job displacement, algorithmic bias, and even the very nature of human intelligence. It's true. These are issues Wired couldn't have fully grasped back in 96, but they're at the forefront of the conversation today. And the article doesn't just focus on the positive potential of technology. It also highlights some of the darker aspects of our digital world. Right. Things like big tech monopolies, online censorship, and the increasing potential for surveillance and control. These are concerns that have become more and more urgent in the years since Reality Check was published. Yep. As technology becomes more powerful and more integrated into our lives, the questions of who controls it and who benefits from it become even more critical. So what does all of this tell us? Maybe Reality Check wasn't a perfect predictor of the future, right. but it does reveal something important about the nature of technological progress. It shows us that some advancements happen much more slowly than we expect, while others seem to come out of nowhere. Yeah. And often it's the social and ethical implications of technology that are the hardest to predict. It's like we're constantly trying to hit a moving target. Cold. We can make educated guesses about what the future holds, but there will always be surprises, and the consequences of those surprises can be both positive and negative. That's why it's so important to have these conversations to critically examine the potential impacts of technology and to think not just about what's possible, but what kind of future we want to create. So deep divers, here's a final thought-provoking question to leave you with. Given what we know now, what technological advancements or challenges do you think will shape the next 25 years? It's fascinating to think about what the world might look like in 2049. Until then, keep diving.